Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Redbirds outfielder, first baseman, Xavier Scruggs. As usual, we have a jam-packed show for you this week. A little later in the program, my recent interviews with Tennessee Vols head football coach Butch Jones and new Vols head hoop coach Rick Barnes. And, of course, we'll talk Grizzlies, who will host the Warriors tomorrow night. But first, Redbird slugger Xavier Scruggs. The Birds have had their struggles early in the season, but they certainly have a talented roster that should win their share of games. Californian Xavier Scruggs has played in the St. Louis Cardinals organization since being drafted out of UNLV in 2008. Last September, he got his first taste of the big leagues after his call-up to the Cardinals. Now he's hoping to get another opportunity to showcase his skills at baseball's highest level. 27-year-old Redbirds power hitter Xavier Scruggs is my guest next on Sports Files. Xavier, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate your time. How, how's everything going so far this season? I feel like I'm playing all right. Um, just trying to do what I can to help this team get some wins and uh, just trying to get better each day. Uh, hopefully, uh, I can keep it going. You've hit for a lot of power. Last year, you had a big power year, power numbers. This year, you're off to that same start. Have you always been a, a pretty good power hitter? Yeah, I've always, uh, I've always had a pretty powerful swing. Always hit a lot of home runs, uh, a lot of doubles. Um, but this focus uh, this year is just, just focus on being a better hitter uh, all around, uh, making more hard, consistent contact, and, and just continuing to get better every day. I know you're walking a lot so far in the early season, which is good. you got a good eye. Uh, the Ks, I know you'd like to come down a little bit, but that really helps with that on-base percentage, getting on whether it be via hit or the walk. Yeah, definitely. Um, just getting on base and having a good on OPS uh, as well. There's two main focuses where I'm looking at my statistics. Um, th that way I'm helping the team in any way I can. Um, being able to get on base and somebody drive me in or me driving somebody else in, that helps us get runs and we win more games. You're obviously on the Cardinals 40-man roster. We'll talk about last year getting called up and what it was like for you in just a moment. But spring training this year, what were your expectations? Did, did you think you had a shot to, to make the team as a utility outfielder? Yeah, I thought I, thought I had a shot. Um, I went into spring training ready to go. Um, didn't play as well as I wanted to, but right. I, got a, I got a good shot. Um, had a lot of good at-bats. Um, but my main focus was just to be ready for any time that they call me, whether it be at the end of spring training or whether it be sometime during the season, uh, just put myself in good position to be ready. What do they say to you about your status with the team, with the organization? Do they talk a lot about that with you? Yeah, um, that's one of the good things is uh, Matheny, he's real clear about that. Um, he'll let you know and um, he told me that I have a good position, to, I'm in a good position to be up there. Um, just depends on what kind of happens up there. Um, and how I do down here. So just continuing to work hard and, and just be ready when that time comes. You're showing your versatility in the field because you're playing both first base and outfield. Uh, how has that gone playing the different positions? It's gone well. Um, I'm glad I can I have the opportunity to show that versatility. Um, I haven't really gotten an opportunity to play outfield in the past. So it's been, uh, it's been good getting more comfortable out there, um, showing that I can, um, I can be very athletic and, and show some skills out there. So I'm glad about that. Do you have a preference? Do you feel more comfortable at first base? Um, do feel a little bit more comfortable at first base just because I've been playing there a lot longer. Uh, but I don't feel uncomfortable in the outfield. So right. things are going well, and, and I'm glad about it. All right, what do you think you need to work on to get better, be more well-rounded player? Yeah, uh, some of the biggest things is continuing to work in the outfield mm -hmm. um, defensively. Um, offensively, just want to have better plate discipline, um, better pitch, rec pitch recognition up there at the plate. 
and uh, just continuing to make hard contact uh, consistently when I'm up there, having a good approach at the plate um, and just driving the ball, continuing to do that. There's now the clock between pitches and between innings, to be honest with you, and the game, I think, has gotten a little faster. Has that had any effect at all on, on the individual player, on you? Um, I would say every now and then, maybe once every couple of games, you look up at the clock and you're like, oh, I need to get in the box. Oh, wow. um, just because you, you might be taking a little bit longer time than, than you thought. Um, so sometimes you'll look up at the clock, and, but most of the time it's, it's not usually a factor. I feel like the game, um, the game is just speeding up a little bit because people know that there's a clock behind them. Um, they're not necessarily looking at the clock all the time, but they know that there's a clock, so it's, it's, uh, you can't really dilly-dally and, and take too much time. So in, in that way, I think, I think it's good, so it keeps the game moving. Yeah, so you think it's good for the game? Yeah, I think it's going well. Um, uh, shortening up the games a little bit, so that, that's good. Keeping the fans interactive and, and watching, that, that's good. And also, I think uh, quickening the game helps younger athletes who nowadays seem to have a preference to play something else other than baseball. When I was a kid, I played baseball. It's the number one sport that we played. We played everything, though. Football season, football, basketball season, basketball. But we played baseball. Now, you're wondering what's going on, especially with young men of color and the preference to play basketball or soccer or something else. What do you think it is with the game? Um, I just think that the game can be a little boring uh, <laughs> for kids. Um, I mean, and that's and that's pretty obvious. But it's it's just a slow moving game, and it's it, but it's our pastime, and and it's something that I've always um, loved. Um, I grew up playing football, basketball as well, but I realized that baseball was was probably the sport that I was going to go the furthest and mm -hmm. have opportunity to get a college scholarship and and um, go to a university. And um, so I was, I was excited about playing baseball um, ever since I was four or five years old. Um, but uh, as you can see, a lot of those other sports are more fast paced and, and sometimes that's, that's more attractive to kids. Um, but baseball is, uh, baseball is the one for me. Baseball been good to you. Yeah, baseball is good. Very, very good to you. Uh, <laughs> September last year, 2014, you get the call up to the show. What was that like? Yeah, that was uh, uh, the best feeling in the world. Um, just knowing that that's something that you've worked so long for, um, just to just to hear that you're going up is is a uh, is a dream come true. Um, being able to call your uh, parents, being able to call my parents and friends back home, just letting them know that a lifelong dream has come true. Um, something that they've seen me work for, something that they've been supporting me for for a long time, and. And just knowing that that first part of the step is done, you're there, and now you just continue to work and, and try to stay there. All right, your first hit was off of who? My first hit was off of uh, J.J. Hoover, I believe, um, for the Cincinnati Reds, a reliever. And where's the baseball? Uh, the baseball is back home. My dad has it. I gave it to him. Um, gave him my first jersey as well. So he's got the baseball and jersey, and now he's looking for the first home run. <laughs> you get great support here in Memphis for the Redbirds and, and for you. But in St. Louis, uh, in that Cardinals organization, which you've been in now a number of years, to get that hit, to get that applause, what was that like? It was, it was almost better than getting called up. Um, just it, it was a big weight off my shoulders knowing that, hey, I feel like I belong here. I can hit here. It's, it's time to go to work. It's time to keep working at, at, this, at this dream. So um, just getting that first hit and getting that first opportunity, big weight off the shoulders. Uh, I felt like I was able to breathe. <laughs> um, so it was just a great moment in general. You come out of high school, I think, in, in 05, and you're drafted, is that the correct year? And you're drafted by Seattle. Yes. And you say, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to college. And you go to UNLV, which now you're obligated to stay there for three years. Were you close to taking the pro contract? No, I wasn't, I wasn't really close. Um, that's something me and my parents had always talked about going and getting college education, and that's something I was always excited about. Um, so I kind of knew I was going to go to college, um, but it was a great honor being drafted. Um, just knowing that I had that opportunity was awesome. Um, but I kind of just told myself, hey, give yourself three good years at UNLV, um, work hard, study hard, and, and play hard, and, and give yourself an opportunity to get drafted again. Um, I had no doubts about that, and I was, I was, ready, to, I was ready to go for my college career. Work hard, study hard, play hard, Las Vegas. <laughs> that had to be a little tough. Yeah, it was, it was a little tough. Um, 
Definitely saw a lot of friends go by the wayside. <laughs> um, but I was always I was always pretty focused. Um, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that baseball was was my focus, and I knew I wanted to get drafted again. So I know that I knew that no other outside factors could could really stop me from that. Um, there's so many distractions, and you have to enjoy your time as well. I enjoyed my time while I was there, but I knew my priority was getting drafted again and and getting an opportunity to get into pro baseball. So you stayed there three years. Obviously, you had a lot of uh, conference accolades. Uh, you've done really, really well. You work your way up, and then all of a sudden, in 08, the Cardinals. Yeah. I mean, out of all the organizations, you had to have been hearing really, really good things like everybody does about the Cardinals when you got drafted, right? Yeah, all I heard was great things. Um, just a historic organization, just top class. Um, so I was immediately so excited just to have the opportunity. Um, just and I was ready to go to work for them. I was, uh, I was young. I wasn't even 21 yet, um, but I was ready um, just to start my professional career. Uh, something that I'd worked hard for for a long time, um, and there was no better organization to be with. I, I've been with them the whole time, and and I'm happy about that. How long did it take until you realized what the Cardinal Way is? We always hear the Cardinal Way. Yeah, it didn't take very long. Um, probably my first spring training, I I got to be a part of uh, was was just a great eye opener um, just seeing the way guys went about their business uh, especially a lot of the big league guys um, you know it's 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 a different type of focus um, they have a, a strict focus on getting the job done um, the way they treat teammates and and everybody around them um, is top class so it's, it's something that you pick up on real quick and I'm, I'm glad I have Xavier they say patience is, is a virtue you've had patience um, has it been hard at times waiting to get your opportunity? Um, yeah, it, it's been it's been tough at times, but uh, I try not to think about that too much. I try to just keep keep it simple and just work one day at a time. I'm just trying to get myself better for uh, for whenever my name is called, whenever I'm needed. Um, but yeah, you you go through a, a stretch of time where you think you might be at you think you should be at a, a different place than where you are. Right. Um, but at the same time, it's just important to keep focus and, and just keep working on getting better as a player um, and just worry about yourself because a lot of those outside factors you can't control. You can only control um, your mind and what, what you do out there. So that's what I'm just focused on. It's a great attitude to have, but you're only human. I would imagine a guy you're playing with and like Gritchick you were playing with, he's up with the big team and all of a sudden you're happy for him, but you're like, come on, why isn't it me? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you um, you obviously question that sometimes, but um, like you said, you're happy for those guys, right? And you know that just you playing with those guys and and doing maybe just as well as some of those guys and and working hard with those guys, you know that you have the same opportunity soon, and um, you know that you can do just as well as they're doing at that level. So um, that just gives me a peace of mind knowing that hey they're doing well there, then you can do just as well there as well. You've gone through the minor league system. You've been here now in Memphis for some time. So you, you know the city pretty well. You know the difference between Poplar Avenue and Union Avenue. What do you, what do you think of the city and your time here in Memphis? Oh, man, I, I absolutely love Memphis. Memphis is awesome. Um, and it's even greater right now during the playoff time with the Memphis Grizzlies. Right. Uh, I've had opportunity to go to the last playoff series game. Hopefully I can get some Warriors uh, game tickets here. There you but, go. The, the city has just been awesome to me, and it's great, it's great to see the fans turn out to, um, to AutoZone Park as well. And, and um, it's, it's just something that I, do, I don't want to leave um, just because I've had such a great time here. Um, but you will. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I absolutely love Memphis. It's just it's, it's great, uh, especially being from California. It's, it's a um, different culture out here, and I, and I love it. I love being a part of it. You grew up in the, in the San Diego area. You played at Vegas where they got the dry heat. You live off season now in Florida. They got some breezes down in Florida, but it's hot. Yeah. In the summer here, you're out there in your uniform playing first base or wherever you're outfield. I mean, how bad is it? How We know how oppressively hot it is just walking around or sitting in the stands in shorts, drinking a cold one, watching the <laughs> game. What, what is it? Is that ever like affect you? Yeah, it, it's, it's weird because Memphis is probably the place I've sweated the most. <laughs> <laughs> I've never sweat so much. Uh, sometimes you got to change shirts in the middle of the game. Wow. Um, but it's just uh, it's just something you start to get used to, um, at least playing-wise in it. But when you're kind of sitting there in the dugout and you're just sweating, you're like, why am I sweating? I'm not even running around. Right. Um, just that humidity is it's crazy. I've never, never felt anything like it. Team is off to a slow start. 
What would you attribute that to? Um, I, I'd say one of the biggest things is uh, I think the team is still gelling together, trying to trying mm -hmm. to figure each other out. Um, got a lot of new pieces. Um, just got a new guy yesterday, uh, Dan Johnson. But but guys are still trying to figure each other out. And I think once that really starts to happen, uh, the pitching and hitting will come together at the same time. Um, obviously, timely hitting is a big is a big thing, and, and as well as the pitching. So once that kind of comes together, I feel like we're just going to take off. You also have a new skipper, Mike yeah. Schilt. Uh, Pop Warner is now a uh, different position with the organization, within the organization. What does Mike bring to the table? Yeah, M Mike, he's, uh, he's been great. Uh, a big Cardinals guy. Um, he's always won at every level that he's been right. at. So he brings that winning mentality to this team. And, and I, feel like, um, I feel like, like I said, as soon as the team starts gelling, we're going to take off. Um, but he's a great skipper to have, um, really focused, um, really a player's coach. Um, let you go out there and play, use your ability, and, and do the things you do well. And um, I'm excited to see what the rest of the season holds. All right. Xavier, you're off the hot seat, although I guess it's the hot table, but we like to end all our interviews with something called Five for the Road. So I need a quick answer to five questions, simple questions, but we're going to learn a little bit more about you. All right. What is your favorite professional sports team? You can't say the Cardinals. My favorite professional sports team is probably the Los Angeles Lakers. The LA Lakers. <laughs> yeah. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because, because they were it's really been bad. Rough. It's been rough. <laughs> I might be switching over to the Memphis Grizzlies now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, favorite pro athlete, any sport of all time? My favorite pro athlete, um, I'd have to go with uh, Gary Sheffield. I grew up watching him hit. Chef. Yeah. He's from um, Southern California, right? Uh, I believe he's from Tampa. He's from Tampa. Oh, that's right. He's from yeah, Tampa. That's Tampa. right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I grew up uh, getting to watch him and, and kind of emulate my stances off him. Um, just just love the way he attacked the baseball and mm -hmm. was a great hitter. So I just love watching him. Okay. How about music? Uh, favorite musician, genre of music? Do you like uh, rock, rap? What do you like? Yeah, I like, uh, I'm, I'm more of a hip hop R&B guy, mm -hmm. um, especially like on the bus, listening to R&B, just help my help myself fall asleep um but uh more laid back stuff or more more laid back okay. um give me, give me an hard. artist give um, me an artist an artist uh i go with uh maybe usher okay usher yeah all right uh favorite movie of all time favorite movie of all time i'm a i'm a sports movie type guy sure. so I, I like remember the titans mm -hmm. um denzel washington um good choice yeah i love watching anything that. else like there you about could, to no, I was just thinking I could I could recite some some lines, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> How about a baseball movie? If you um, went baseball, baseball. Uh, let's see, love Major League. Mm -hmm. um, just a funny, uh, good film. Um, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Light. We'll wrap it up with this favorite television show, favorite uh, television all time. Show. Be rerun show, something you're watching now and. That's uh, new. I'm a big Will Smith guy. I love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> We've had that answer from I don't know how many different sports personalities. Well, as soon as you said reruns, I thought about I could watch that every day. It's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Will's the best. Xavier, thank you so much. Continued success. We look forward to uh, the rest of the season and hopefully when you get that call back up to St. Louis. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. All right. We'll take a quick break. Overtime is coming up next. Big Orange Caravan rolled through Memphis last week, bringing out hundreds of Vols fans to the Great Hall and Conference Center. On hand were UT head football coach Butch Jones and new men's head basketball coach Rick Barnes, who was hired by the Vols at the end of March after 17 seasons at the University of Texas. And I had a chance to speak with the coaches on a number of different subjects. Butch, uh, getting back to Memphis, uh, talk about it as a recruiting ground for you guys. 
Well, it's a, it's a big recruiting ground for us, and uh, there's great high school coaches, there's great high school football players, and it's part of the state of Tennessee. And uh, we talk about taking care of home first and foremost, and part of that is Memphis and the Memphis area, and we've been fortunate. Uh, we're very excited to have Drew Richmond. He'll be joining us here in a couple weeks, and we're excited to get him going. When you get on the road and you, and you go to these different places around the state and around the the Knoxville area. What's your what's your message to fans? Well, I like interacting with them, and it's all about our fans. We have the best fan base in America. You look at the spring game turnout, sixty three thousand with threat of severe weather. Uh, so again, I think it's time to interact, uh, share their excitement, kind of share some of the things that are going on with our football program. But it's really all about them. What were the goals in spring football, and did you accomplish them? Good question. Well, we were set back a little bit because of the inordinate amount of injuries. And so we had to really focus on the, the development individually. And we talked about every person really being accountable for their own self-determination and really putting their football identity on video each and every day. And we had some individuals step up. You know, it's hard to really assess where we're at as a football team because by the end of spring football, we had 16 individuals out. Uh, but I was very pleased. And, and what that allowed, it allowed an opportunity for a lot of individuals to get 500 plus repetitions like a Kendall Vickers, you know, uh, a Brett Kendrick, individuals like that, that we're going to need this upcoming season. You mentioned the performance in the Tax Lair Bowl, big victory for you guys, but you had to win a number of games down the stretch to just get there. What does that say to the fans? What does it say to the, the players that are coming back about the progress of this program? Well, usually teams that end on a strong note and win championships in December and go to great bowl games, they're able to manage their adversities, the natural adversities that a long football season brings about. And we spoke about it, about the focus of one, just one day at a time working to be a better football team. And we're still arguably going to be the youngest football team in all of college football again this year. So again, it's being able to learn uh, each and every week, be able to manage your adversities and just keep working and believing. And I thought really uh, the, the stepping stone for us to propel was the Florida game. Uh, you know, we could have packed it in. We could have listened to all the noise and distractions out there. And to our players' credit, everyone was very disappointed. Uh, obviously, starts with me first and foremost. But I thought that the way our team rallied, the way our team stayed together, and I knew if we would just focus that we could have a very strong finish. And I'm proud of our players by the way we did finish. Thank you, Butch. Thank you. Coach, welcome to Memphis. Um, you know, pretty good uh, ground for great basketball players over the years. What do you think about the, the city? What do you know about it? Well, I've recruited it before. Uh, actually, when we were at uh, uh, back my days at Providence College and spent quite a bit of time here, actually. And then uh, through the years, you know, with the different schools that I've been with, we've always tried to get into Memphis and recruit. And, and uh, because, as you said, it's a great area. And, uh, and it's an area that we would love to be able to come into now. And, and see if we can get some guys out of here. Why was this opportunity the right opportunity for you? Well, the way it happened, there's no question it was Dave Hart. Uh, from the time that he and I started uh, talking about uh, Tennessee and from my past relationship, just knowing him and knowing what he's about. And once I got on the phone with him, uh, you, could, you could really sense his excitement. And uh, he just spoke so highly of uh, what was going on on campus, the energy. Obviously, he had you know, great things to say about Butch and what he's doing, but uh, when you watch and, and know about Holly and, and what she's done, it's been phenomenal. Phenomenal, and then you know I, I was fortunate to really get to know Pat Summit uh, way back when she wore the Converse, we wore the Converse. She had the Baden ball, we had it, and uh, so I, I knew all about the tradition. I, I really did. And my wife being a graduate of the University of Tennessee, and but Dave's excitement was, uh, and and after being there, it's. Uh, it's a great place in a lot of different ways, but one of them is true. And you hear it all the time about the people, but uh, there's a genuine uh, love for the university, but the people there in all sports, in a way, Butch and softball program, everyone's opened themselves up and uh, everybody's going in the same direction and pulling for each other. And that's a, that's a great thing to have. Ironically, both Butch Jones and Rick Barnes were back in Memphis this past Monday night to watch the Memphis Grizzlies face the Golden State Warriors in Game 4 of their Western Conference semifinal round playoff series. 
The Grizzlies went into the contest leading the best of seven set two games to one after topping the Warriors in game three Saturday night. Unfortunately, the Grizzlies offense struggled early in the game and never really got into a rhythm. Much of that had to do with an inspired defensive effort by the Warriors who played like a desperate team. They also found their offense with league MVP Stephen Curry lighting up the Grizzlies for 33 points. Marcus Gasol led the Grizz with 19 points. He added 10 rebounds and six assists. The Grizzlies and Warriors now get set for a return to FedEx Forum tomorrow night for game six. And once again, the grindhouse will be a madhouse as the Grizzlies will undoubtedly sell out once again, which would be their 26th straight postseason sellout. Finally, it is with heavy hearts that we end this week's show. We said goodbye to friend and colleague Pierre Kimsey, who passed away late last week. Pierre produced behind the headlines and our other public affairs programs. He will be missed. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.